Amen. Point number three. When our mobility is restricted, it shouldn't limit our mission. When Apostle Paul was reaching people for Jesus, he got to the point where he got locked up. He got in prison. He got chained up. And it's interesting that when Paul's mobility, his ability to walk to places, his ability to travel was restricted. When he was not allowed to go as free as he was able to, Apostle Paul doesn't stop talking about Jesus. Apostle Paul, like I mentioned already, he talks to kings, he talks to other people, but then Apostle Paul begins to write letters to churches and he begins to send those letters and encourage those churches in Christ. Now I'm pretty sure Apostle Paul was in jail and he was probably feeling like, man, I could have planted so many more churches. I could have raised up so many more Timothys and Tyruses and I could have done so many more healings. I could have cast out so many more demons. I could have established so many home groups if I would have been free. But now my life has changed and man, I'm so bummed out because I'm so limited now. But Apostle Paul, though being afflicted in this area of not being able to travel, he still continued to minister to God though in his limited way as it seemed well today apostle paul didn't know that in one day more people will read his writings than he will be able to see face to face in his lifetime apostle paul didn't know that 2000 years later the letters he wrote are not just going to be letters they're going to be found they will be combined into a book that people will buy, buy and this book will be the best seller on every list of all time. He didn't know that there will be an app called Bible app and people will download millions of people every day. This Ukrainian boy in the United States on the morning prayer will be reading Apostle Paul's letters for 20th time. He didn't know there's going to be you and I. So they're in jail still doing what God called him but limited not knowing it's going to make a bigger impact in the whole run. My friend, don't let your mission be stopped even when you feel afflicted in a certain area of your life. Let it change your method but not your mission. Let it change your method not your mission. Maybe you're in, in, in college right now. You got all the school. You got full-time school. You're a part-time job. You're like, I can't make it. I can't be as faithful. I can't be as committed because of so many responsibilities. I'm like Paul. I am like in jail. College is jail. <laughs> well, it could seem like with the time restraints, you feel like you're restricted. But even then, this is not your time to say, well, I'm going to take a break from God. I'm going to take a break, break from preaching Jesus. I'm going to take a break from t telling, telling about Jesus. I'm going to take a break from home group. Maybe you're a single mom, you're a single mom or maybe you just got a child. And you're like, you know what? I can't have a home group no more because I got this little baby and I can no longer witness or do these things as I used to do. Yes, you're right. You are limited. Yes, you are right. There is a certain limitation, but you should change your method, not your mission. Maybe you moved new in town and you don't have nobody here. You're like, I don't know who to invite to church. I don't know who to talk to. Over there, I was talking to my co-workers, but in here it's so new, it's different. Listen, change your methods, but don't change your mission. Do not change your calling in life, but change how you do it and your approach. Can somebody say amen? There was this guy, his name was John Bunyan. He was a preacher a long time ago. And at that time for preaching the gospel you can also be put in jail and like Apostle Paul he was put in jail for 12 years for preaching the gospel and during that period of time the officials came and they said if you're gonna stop preaching about Jesus we'll release you he said if you release me I will speak about Jesus the next person I see they locked him up again 12 years he couldn't see his wife he couldn't be with his family and during those 12 years you know it seemed like a life was wasted but he started to write his experiences with God. He started to get revelations from God and he wrote this book called The Pilgrim's Progress. That most of you have read this book, most of you have heard about this book but if you don't, if you ever come close to literature you will find out in the English language 
the book that's on the top after the bible that sold the most is pilgrim's progress it's translated to 200 languages about 80 african languages alone this book has made more influence on not just the christian world on the literature itself and probably any other book little did that guy knew that when his circumstances changed but he didn't change his mission and his calling God will still use him in his own powerful way listen my friend maybe your finances change maybe things in your family change maybe there are certain things that happen with your schooling when things change with your circumstances listen do not lay down your calling do not lay down your assignment to win souls and make disciples don't make an excuse and say well now I can't do it because you know I drive a truck now I cannot do it well because now I have a child now I cannot do it because I have a full time and another full time and I do school at night I can no longer serve God as I used to you are right you can no longer serve as you used to but you should not stop serving the way you can now can somebody say amen